so the next question uh, that I want to talk about is that uh, regular languages regular languages are close under in intersection. How can we show that? So there are two ways. One, we can modify the above construction. So same Cartesian product construction, we can modify it uh, to get uh, uh, to, to, to get a DFA that recognizes the intersection language. Right? So we want to show that if uh, A1 and A2 are regular, then A1 intersection A2 is also regular. And 2 is something simpler. We have seen that regular languages are closed under union and complement. Can we combine this? So I want you to just think about both of this. So neither of um, neither of these are not that that difficult. It's, it's fairly straightforward. First one is uh, we constructed a DFA M that accepts the union language <coughs> or that recognizes the union language. Can we can we modify this construction to uh, to to make a DFA that accepts the intersection? That is one. And second is we have already seen regular languages are closed under union, and that regular languages are closed under complement. Can we somehow combine these two inferences to uh, to get that regular languages are closed under in intersection? Meaning. Suppose A1 and A2 are there, we want to get a DFA that uh, recognizes A1 intersection A2. Suppose A1 and A2 are there, we know that uh, there is a DFA that recognizes a reunion, we know that there is a DFA that recognizes the complement of A1, complement of A2 and complement of something else, anything that else that, that is also regular. So can we combine this to infer that regular languages are close under intersection, right? So, so I'm saying it's 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 a it's a true. It's it, so instead of Q, uh, maybe I'll just erase this. this is, I'll just say theorem. Uh, and the Q is just how can we show this? The question is, is how can we show this? This is the theorem. Okay. And um, the next thing, so we saw, we said that there are three regular operations. One is union, one is concatenation, and one is star. So the next thing to to try is to show that regular languages are close under concatenation operation. Meaning. If A1 and A2 are regular, then the concatenation, even concatenation A2 is also regular. So the natural thing or the, the, the immediate thing to try now that we are on the, we are, we are successfully um, shown that union uh, is, uh, regular languages are close under union, is to now we have an M1 which recognizes A1, M2 which recognizes A2. Now, can we combine this somehow, right? So, suppose we get a string, let's say 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, some, something, right? Suppose we get a string like this. Now, um, we can try, for instance, uh, maybe 0, 1, 1, 0 uh, is part of A1 and 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 is part of A2, right? And we verify that 0, 1, 1, 0 is part of A1 by M1. So we just check whether 0, 1, 1, 0 is accepted by M1 and 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 is accepted by M2. And both of them 
accept then we accept right so then this is a concatenation this part is from this part belongs to uh, the first part belongs to a1 and the second part belongs to a2 and then we accept right but um, what if uh, sorry but what if uh, we tried something else what if we tried something like uh, we tried breaking the string like this instead of the first four and the last five we try to feed the first seven 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 right this we check whether it is um, accepted by m1 and then we check whether 1 1 is accepted by m2 right uh, perhaps these are not accepted by the respective or at least one of the respective uh, DFAs. Um, then how can we uh, so how can we infer that the the, the um, how can we how can we conclude that uh, so we want a DFA that tells us whether uh, that accepts all the concatenations right. So I am saying that 0 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 is a concatenation of a 1 and a 2 because the first part is in a 1 the first 0 1 1 0 is in a 1 and 0 0 1 1 1 is in a 2. But when you just give a string like this then the combined machine m does not know where to split it. It does not know where which which prefix was from m a 1 and which suffix was from m a 2. So and, and there is no way to like kind of encode that information also because it, it could it is possible that it, it is part of multiple such combinations also right. But again like we saw in the first attempt of trying to show that uh, trying to show that uh, uh, regular languages are close under union we cannot try one split and again try go back and try another splits in DFH you just have one chance to check whether the string is accepted by the DFA or not we do not have we cannot go back and try again. Right. So, that kind of uh, uh, forces us to think of other approaches. So, it turns out that none of this uh, like we cannot do this uh, easily by in a uh, deterministic machine or in a DFA. So, this requires us to uh, think of other concepts and that leads us to the next concept called of non-determinism. Okay. So, the next thing we will see is uh, if we, um, another type of automaton called non-deterministic finite automata or abbreviated as NFA. So, it is just like the same as deterministic finite automata, but instead of deterministic it is the opposite it is non-deterministic. So, you may recall that I said that in a deterministic machine um, given a certain state sorry given a certain state and let us say and, and a certain symbol 0 you have only one destination to go to. But now in a non-deterministic uh, non deterministic finite automata there could be multiple such outgoing arrows with the same symbol from a same state. This is one of the this is just one of the things that are special or different about non-deterministic finite automata more uh, we will see in the next lecture. Right. So, so, even given a state and a symbol we do not there could be multiple options and there is there are choices and the, this leads to more confusion also and more power also. So, let me just summarize what we just saw in this lecture. So, we want to show that a class of regular languages are close under the union operation. We made this DFA which is a Cartesian product right. So, Suppose m1 is the uh, DFA of a1 and m2 is the DFA of a2. We made a DFA m which uh, which replicates the uh, uh, m1 and m2. So if if m1 has uh, let's say 10 states and m2 has 4 states, the machine the DFA m has 10 times 4 40 states. So right, it keeps track of uh, where what m does in a uh, with a certain string and what m uh, sorry what m1 does in a certain string and what m2 does with a certain string as well. So, by having this kind of grid kind of structure and it faithfully reproduces the, the transitions as well. 
So, so if you just look at which column it is in, you will see where M1 took it to, took the string to. And if you see, just see which row it is in, you will see where M2 takes that string to. And uh, the rest is kind of straightforward. Uh, you have a Q1 cross Q2 number of uh, the states. And the transitions are as I described. The starting state is a, the state which is combined by the starting state of M1 and starting state of M2. And accepting states are the set of states uh, where either R1 is, a uh, is in the accepting state of M1 or R2 is in the accepting state of M2. So, notice the or not and. right? And uh, I asked what will happen if it is an AND and that is for you to think through and the proof is fairly straightforward. I also kind of uh, reminded that it is not enough to show that. Uh, so, what we showed is this that for all W that is in the union W is accepted by M. This just establishes that A1 union A2 is in the language generated by uh, recognized by M. To be to, for the proof to complete, we also need to argue that uh, the language recognized by M contains nothing more. So, meaning, if if a one if there is a string that is not in the union, it is not accepted, right? Uh, the other thing that I mentioned is regular languages are closed under intersection, and then I uh, stated the fact that regular languages are closed under the concatenation operation, and then we kind of saw that the the strategy that we followed so far in trying to build a DFA does not quite work and that motivated us that we use that to motivate the introduction of non-determinism and non-deterministic finite automata and we will see non-deterministic finite automata in the next lecture. So, that is it uh, for lecture number 5. Uh, thank you. <laughs>